The Smart Board Revolution Google Plus Community presents a Smart Survival Guide. I'm your host, Matt Granger. This episode is using the Capture Tool. Now, currently, the Capture Tool is available on your floating toolbar. However, later in 2015, it's going away, this floating toolbar. And I always just add it to my notebook toolbar. So to customize the toolbar, I go to the Customize Toolbar icon, the gear in the top of the toolbar. It's an action, so it's going to be in this pane, and it's down here, a screen capture. So I'm going to drag it up here, and I'm going to make it big by putting it here where I get the full-sized blue line. I could make it small if I put it down here. While I'm here, things that I'm not going to use, I can go ahead and drag those out. But I do want it big, so I'm going to put it right there. And when I'm finished, I click Done. So when I click that, I get the Capture Toolbar. Now I have four choices. The first one here is the Area Capture. That lets me drag a box around an area, a rectangle. When I let go, I get the area that I selected. The second one is a full screen capture. It's going to capture everything on the screen. The window capture will capture a whole window. And what's a window? A window is if you have multiple programs open, each program is open in its own window. And then finally, the freehand capture tool. So how might we use these? Since this is a floating toolbar, it's floating over top of everything here, if I change to another program, it's still floating. Let's say that we refine something on the internet and we want to turn this into a notebook activity. We want to capture each of these onto a notebook page, so I would open up my area capture. I'll put this one on a page. So it went here into a notebook page. There's that image. I can click on it and resize it if I want. For me, I'm always going to try to get it so it fits in one window without having to scroll. So I'm always going to resize it a little bit like that. And if it's going to be a background image, I'm going to lock it down. I can go back now and now I need number two. So I scroll my page here, area capture, number two. Notice that this went on the same page as number one. So I can grab this image, drag it to the page tab and then drop it on number two. Now the options here let you capture to a new page this way, each time you capture one of those images, it's going to go to a new page. Sometimes you don't want that if you want to put several images on one page. So you would uncheck that. And so I would just continue going through and doing this, putting each one on a new page. I'll go back later and do all the resizing. So that's the area capture. That can be done in a PDF, in a Word document, in a web page, anything. Now if I was trying to capture text from a PDF or a Word document that I wanted to be able to edit, say with the text pen, then I would copy and paste the text instead of doing this, because this is just an image. If I wanted the cute little butterfly as an accent for something, now I'm going to use the free hand. So I tap and I go around it and I have to go back to where I started and then that captures the butterfly. Now while we're here I'll show you another little trick. Maybe I have a, a colored background that I want to put this on and I've got this white now. So once I have the image Click on the image, you're going to get your drop down menu. I can go down to 
set image transparency click on the part that you want to be transparent which is the white and then set transparency so the capture tool now gives you another option for capturing images capturing an area of another thing that you have on your computer to put in your lessons in smart notebook